A new law in Afghanistan has sparked protests by Afghan women rights activists and heavy criticism from abroad. The law aimed at the nation's Shia minority states. Women need their husband's permission before leaving the house and that husbands have the right to sex on demand from their wives. Here to discuss the turmoil caused by this new law is Syed Zafar Hashimi of Voice of America. Welcome to the program. Good to be here. Who is behind this controversial law which critics say sanctions marital rape and why, is it, why has it been written? Well, according to the article number 131 of Afghanistan's constitution, Shia minority in Afghanistan is allowed to harm their own personal or family law. And almost a year ago, President Karzai ordered such a law to be, per, to be written and passed through the parliament so that he could pass it and he, he could approve it. And over the past year, this was under debate in the lower house of Afghanistan's National Assembly. And it was approved there with a lot of discussions and advices from Islamic Council of Afghanistan and also prominent Shia clerics and intellectuals and from representatives of several society which are part of the Shia minority in Afghanistan and it was approved by the lower house and also the upper house and when it was actually approved signed by the president to, to be sent to Gazette for uh, to be effective in the country an international outcry buzzword and also well I mean critics say that it sanctions marital rape um, does it? And what happens if a woman says no to her husband's sexual demands? Well, act actually, it, it, does, uh, it does say article number 132 and 100 number 33, which are the very controversial that talks about the uh, going out of a woman and also sexual demands of a man toward his wife. It, it does say that uh, a woman has to uh, only if she's not feeling well, if she's sick or she's on a period, she has to say yes to the desire of her, her husband, sexual desire of her husband. What happens if she says no? Well, then it, it's a law, and whatsoever you do which is against law, then it's court. But, but the husband can refuse to, to feed the wife, is that correct? W well, it's, it depends on the person, but the actual point is that it is the law and if you do something against the law then you have to be sent to court to talk about it. And, and why this obsession with women? Because of the traditional society of Afghanistan and the interesting thing is that this has been going on f among like more than 90 percent women of Afghanistan not only among Shia minority but in major majority of the country which is Sunni in the past it, w it was a tradition but the only difference is that it, it has been codified and it has been legalized now. And why turn this into law I mean when most Afghan women especially rural women are living with these, half, uh, these, these harsh strictures in their daily lives anyway? Because prominent Shia clerics who are members of the Afghan parliament and also other Shia mullahs who are in the country, they feel like they have to have their own way of living based on the Shia law and Shia religious provisions. So they want Shia jurisprudence? Yes. And President Karzai has said that he will look into it and if it um, breaches the constitution and Sharia law, then it will be changed. What are the difficulties, what are the complexities of doing that? Well, first of all, he, was, he has been many, many times in the past criticized for signing before reading. And this is another example. The interesting point that has to be noticed is that the problem is with the constitution of Afghanistan. Article number two and three declares Islam as official religion of Afghanistan. And article number three says that no laws or action could be tolerated or implemented in Afghanistan if it's against provisions of Sharia law. Does it's, it's Sharia law have, uh, pr does it have pr preeminence though or not? W well, if you see human rights, the universal human rights declarations, UN, UN Charter and Islamic Sharia, they're not 
it's not easy to match them together and they can simply contradict with each other. So basically the problem is with the Constitution, Article number 2 and 3 versus Article number 7. So how do you see this being resolved short of rewriting the Constitution? Well, it's not the first case and it's not going to be the last one based on this problem with the Constitution of Afghanistan. In the past you had Abdul Rahman, the Afghan who converted to Christianity and he was sentenced to death but because of a lot of international pressure he was given asylum in Italy now. And also you had Parvez Kambaksh, uh, Kambaksh an Afghan journalist who wrote, who distributed articles which was anti-Islamic and he was sentenced to death. Later because of international pressure he was sentenced to 25 years jail and he's still in jail. The other thing that critics have said is that uh, President Karzai signed this to curry favor with the Shia minority for the upcoming elections. What, what do you think? Do you think that women's rights are being traded as, some, as part of some kind of political play? As I said before, this law was proposed by President Karzai more than a year ago. And it's, it was still in the process of being reviewed by the National Assembly of Afghanistan. And some critics did say that, but uh, since the international outcry is so massive and so big now, even if that was the case, then President Karzai, in order to respond to international outcry, might step back from what he was in initially thinking about. But there is no source or there is no one who would confirm that th this was the case, that he wanted to win. Shia vote in the upcoming election. There were, of course, extraordinary scenes where women, Afghan women, came out to protest this law. What is the environment like for women's rights advocates? I mean, is it, is it a dangerous environment to, for them? I mean, are most of them working underground? I mean, we saw how there was a counter demonstration and these women were attacked and abused and some of them were called whores and all kinds of other expletives. Well, it depends on where you are, actually. Kabul city, for, for instance, is relatively safe. And if, you could, if you're talking about security, human security in Afghanistan, not only women, but men are also on high threat. It's not safe to go outside. And whosoever walks in Afghanistan, even in Kabul city, which is capital of the country, they say we're just expecting an unexpected threat because we never know who's going to blow himself up. OK, and how has this war improved the situation for women? It did improve relatively, but it's, it's not the way. Everything could have been better. Not only the women's situation in Afghanistan, but also reconstruction efforts in, on all aspects. It could have been better, but the problems, the corruption, the rise of insecurity back from 2005 to two, up to now, all these problems, all these obstacles are just a kind of trying to limit the mission that the international community and the government of Afghanistan had. Okay, Saeed Zafar Hashimi, thank you very much for coming along and giving us your insights. Thank you so much.